Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, the fabulous Manny Pacheco, Hollywood historian and uh, great man of repute in Hollywood, is with us again to talk about movies, classic Hollywood. Manny, repute. great to see you. Repute, by God. Yeah, repute. By the way, yeah, I, 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 I jumped a little bit of that. Not ill, there were kinds of different kinds of repute, good repute. Yes, okay. as opposed to ill repute. That's right. Exactly. I got it. Okay, because uh, some people might have jumped to that other conclusion. Well, I'm just <laughs> saying. No, 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 not true. Not true. Not true. It's it definitely bon repute. Boom, boom. Uh, okay. So anyway, um, given we we talk about about a lot of uh, Hollywood stars, particularly some of the older ones in the the 30s and 40s, and even into the 50s that uh, we have over the years. And there's one person that I only associate with with Westerns, but I suspect that there's a, uh, I know that you know a lot more about th these people than we do, but Ward Bond to me is the quintessential Western character, whether it be, you know, driving the wagon truck. He's on a horse and he's got a hat and he's got a six gun. Okay. Is there a, any other dimension to Ward Bond that maybe we should know? Well, Ward Bond, number one, I mean, you can say that, and you're probably correct. I mean, he made a lot of Westerns, but he just made a lot of movies. I mean, this guy, if you if you were to compare him to, let's say, Alan Hale Sr. or John Carradine, I mean, these were these character actors that were making two, three movies a day for many, many years. I mean, their, their movies number in the 250s to 400s. I mean, they made a lot of movies, maybe not big parts, but they, they appeared, in Ward Bond's case, he can boast of appearing in more Academy Award-nominated movies than any other actor in history. Really? Yeah, he, he really did appear in them. Now, he did make a lot of Westerns, and of course, he was part of that great John Ford factory of, of, of Western stars that made all sorts of great Westerns from Stagecoach on. And of course, you see Ward Bond in, in movies like Ford Apache and She Wore a Yellow Ribbon right. and, um, and Rio Bravo and of course, The Searchers and and others. And of course, then he was on television and, and, and the only chance only chance he ever had to star in something, which was that wagon train. Right, right. But your question is, is, did he do anything else? Well, he did do a lot of bit parts in very familiar movies. He got to play, for example, a concierge at a hotel in the iconic movie that really made um, uh, Humphrey Bogart a real star in Dead End. And actually what it did is it, it made stars of the Dead End kids. Sure. Uh, he was uh, Inspector Detective Pole House who asks Humphrey Bogart, what is this black bird that everybody wants? And, oh, uh, that's right. <laughs> and, and then, of course, it's, it's Humphrey Bogart who says it's the stuff the dreams are made of. And he's talking about, uh, obviously, the Maltese Falcon. He yes. plays a, um, a, a, a union general who has jailed Clark Gable in Gone with the Wind. He's a, mm. pal, he's a pal of Gary Cooper in the backwoods of Kentucky before he becomes a, a hero in, of World War I in Sergeant York. I mean, the list just goes on mm. and on and on. Um, I mean, Ward Bond was a working actor six to seven days a week for a good 30 years. Yeah. And, uh, of course, he was a he was a, a college pal of John Wayne because they both played football at USC. Ah, that's how they that. were discovered. Yeah, they, they were discovered that way. Yeah. And so he never rose to fame the way John Wayne did. He didn't have those rugged good looks, but he had that burly quality that would give him the equal aplomb of being tough guy or man of authority. One of my yeah. favorite roles that he did, I'll tell you my favorite, maybe my favorite uh, Ward Bond film. And it's not my favorite movie by a long shot, but his performance was superb when he plays John L. Sullivan when he loses to Gentleman Jim Corbett in the movie Gentleman Jim with Errol Flynn. And there is a scene when he, where he, he um, speaks to Errol Flynn that he accepts this defeat with grace and dignity. And it, it really can almost bring a tear to your eye how good uh, Ward Bond is as playing the, the uh, defeated uh, you know, one-time champion, you know, world champion 
of the heavyweight division in, in John L. Sullivan. It, it is really a master stroke of acting. Manny, um, I too uh, think of Ward Bond really as uh, in cowboy movies. Is it the fact that maybe his in his early career he got to play all these different parts, or and did he get typecast after a while? I think he, he if you asked him, he probably would have said, "I'd rather play cowboy roles." I think he was mm -hmm. more comfortable. There, there are actors like that who like to play a certain genre for whatever reason. I mean, they just they yeah. just settle into a, a, a certain type, and they're very, very comfortable of playing that type. And I think if you had asked Ward Bond. I don't think he wanted to stretch his chops too much. I think he wanted to be a comfortable actor. And even though it's physically hard to be a cowboy actor, it, it's not emotionally or maybe psychologically right. hard to play a good, a good guy. You put on the white hat, you're a hero. You put on the black hat, you're a villain. <laughs> now you shoot him up, you know. And, people, and you've got to act tough whether you're a good guy or a bad guy. you got to act tough and you got to say a lot of yep and nope and, you know. <laughs> And it was you have to learn how to kiss a horse is what you have to do. And the what only falcons you run across are the ones making lazy circles in the sky. None of these Maltese <laughs> kind of falcons. Now, I got to tell you that Ward Bond, I'm going to get a little controversial here, but Ward Bond joined a, a collective group of people who were committed after the war, after World War II, at eliminating what they called communism from Hollywood infiltration. And really what this was, was the ability to attack those folks who were trying to solidify unions in Hollywood. And there were a great group of people who were really against this. Everybody from Louis B. Mayer to Walt Disney to Hedda Hopper to John Wayne and Ward Bond, along with Charles Coburn, another great character actor, were not above really fighting in a very ultra patriotic way to name names. Now, there are those who have vilified Ward Bond and, you know, he's a, he's a third or fourth chapter in my first book. And I've actually had people who have looked through my books who say, oh, Ward Bond is in your book. I need to buy this. And I've had other people who say, oh, Ward Bond is in your book. I can never support that. And that basically speaks to their politics with one way or the other. And I try not to get too political. But here is the contention that I make about Ward Bond. I think that if he had lived longer than he did, uh, and I'll tell you what happened to him, but I mean, let's say he lived as long as Ronald Reagan or John Wayne, or maybe even Hedda Hopper. I think that in the case of Wayne and, um, and Disney, Walt Disney as well, I think that he would have been honored as a patriot w with airport names, you know, with buildings named after him, maybe Washington building names after him, as maybe Reagan and Wayne had that opportunity. But he died of a heart attack in 1960, right at the heart of the naming of names. And he never just got past that whole McCarthyism. He's kind of frozen in time the very minute he died. There are hints that he would have been able to overcome all of that because that's how he was given the starring role you know, in, in Wagon Train. I think there were gonna be m many more TV roles uh, for him. I think it really would have, he would have been a big TV actor. I truly believe that. And I think that he would have been loved as a TV actor, the same way Walter Brennan, another uh, person who loved naming names. But yeah. Walter Brennan is beloved. Why? Because he was able to make a name for himself in television and kind of overcome that whole McCarthyism. Yeah. Ward Bond never had that opportunity. He died right when it could have happened. He had a massive heart attack. He was on the way to a USC game. They were playing in Texas, and he was in his hotel room, suffers a massive heart attack after the making of Rio Bravo, his last movie, and he died right then and there. And he's frozen in time, and um, that's the tragic tale of Ward Bond. So he's either beloved or vilified, and, and that's just the way we look at him. Yeah, interesting. Uh, interesting character, great actor. And you're absolutely right. Uh, my recollection of him is primarily from the TV series, you know, Wagon Train. Yeah. yeah I, th I think a lot of TV shows would have been in his office. I could see him working next to, let's say, Pat O'Brien and Walter Brennan in the Over the Hill Gang, for example, <laughs> had he been alive. Yeah. I mean, that's a good example of what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's, that's what's really nice about um, when we get together and we, we get these deeper looks at the the people that you've studied that your expertise is in. And so we, we see this veneer and uh, 
uh, you've always been able to fill us in on the depth of these people, things that we had no idea about. Quite frankly, I never knew about him, probably because he died. He never, he, he may have in the early days in his, uh, with his peers, uh, been known as part of the blacklist uh, group, you know, oh, all yeah. people who are naming names. But I never heard that because he died. Uh, and other people were vilified who didn't die. Well, or 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 they were cleared and they became heroes. Yeah. Uh, he right. died in 1960. But, you know, at the end of the day, Art, you're right. I'm a master peeler of, of, of onions. <laughs> yes. Oh, so there it, brings a tear to, it brings a tear to my eye. Uh, and sometimes I'll be able to bring a tear in your eye because that's what you do with onions. That's right. Well, Manny, there's you got the best onions in the business. That's all I can say. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> for more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.